And a what the hell everything for Cinco de Mayo 2021 coming up on the podcast, talking to podcaster Brad Hall with the Drunk Nature podcast. Also, I feel this UFO news should get more attention. I'm going to talk about Kevin the Dolphin in Ireland, which is immediately my new favorite thing. Uh, Kid Rock's shittier restaurant got even shittier. The 30th anniversary of the most Wisconsin story of all time. My new favorite actor and a brand spanking new for 20 break. All coming up on the podcast. And I remember years and years ago when I found out that Cinco de Mayo meant May 5th. <laughs> what the hell, everything. What the hell, everything. Welcome to the What the Hell, Everything podcast. My name is Smitty. Uh, let's do a May 4th. May the 4th recap. I uh, watched Empire, The Strikes Back, for those not in the Star Wars loop, and Return of the Jedi. Uh, back-to-back nights ended it on the 4th. May the 4th be with you with Return of the Jedi. I'm on record as saying it's always May the 4th in the Smith Hole. Uh, br- Brother Levi watched. Uh, I caught him watching Empire at the beginning two nights ago. And uh, I said, oh, I'm going to watch that. I was down here doing podcasts. Huff. I guess I'm going to go upstairs and watch Empire Strikes Back. And last night, I was going to do more things for the podcast. And then <laughs> Levi was watching Return of the Jedi. And I said, well, I guess I'm watching that. But I wonder how long I'm going to watch, I'm going to enjoy Star Wars for it. I was telling Brother Levi uh, while we were watching the movie the other day. I said, dude, I literally have been watching Star Wars my whole life. I, my early, some of my earliest memories are of watching the original Star Wars A New Hope uh, at my grandparents' house before it burnt down. I have vague memories of this house before it burnt down. I, I don't know. When did uh, 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 that Star Wars come out on HBO? Because it was like such a big deal to go over to my grandparents to watch HBO. And we watched the original when it was released on HBO. So whenever that was, I've been watching it since then. I'm, prob- I'm going to be 75 years old and... <laughs> quoting Yoda until the day I die. Like, the more I watch things that I liked as a kid, uh, more and more when I revisit them, I don't like them anymore. I'm trying to think of the latest example. I can't think of the latest example right off the top of my head, but there, there'll be movies that, uh, uh, you know, I watch 10 years after watching them, and I'm like, well, that's dated, and I don't want to watch that. Then, 10 years later, I don't know, something else. Oh, now I'm too old for that movie. <laughs> it's, it's like, if I'm ever fucking too old for mall rats, just take me out in the back 40. Get me out of here. Fuck that. Like, dicks and farts. God, hopefully dicks and farts are always funny. If I start turning into a stiff a-hole, out of here. Speaking of Star Wars, uh, yesterday on Cinco, no, yesterday on May the 4th, uh, I was wearing my rad uh, Moss Eisley t-shirt when I interviewed Drunk Nature podcaster Brad Hall. Uh, the Brad Hall. Hello. The I'm Brad good. Hall. Uh, well, I didn't prep really anything for this podcast because I knew I probably didn't have to. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, we were just talking just before recording. Uh, you ran for, uh, what was it, uh, county commission? I'm a county commissioner, yep. Did you win? No. I can't believe no. I didn't follow up to find out if you won. <laughs> uh, is, uh, I mean, I don't want to necessarily tell a side politically one way or the other. There's a lot more people on the opposing side than I ran for. I don't want to alienate my, uh, the potential base for watching the TV show, so I don't want to pick a side. But it's a good idea. It's a good, it's yeah. a good move. Yeah, it's a very uh, it's a very one sided county. So I it was already an uphill battle, but I didn't lose by a lot. So that's uh, promising for the next one. Now, what uh, motives behind running? Because I honestly I didn't talk to you, and I kicked yeah. myself in the ass for not talking to you when I found out you were running. Uh, your motives for running? Um, there's <laughs> this is gonna sound bad. I, well, I was asked first yeah. of all uh, by the local party leaders, and then I mean one thing that like I got married last year right before the pandemic. Um, I feel like the marriage was the reason the pandemic started. So sorry for that. Uh, yeah, we got married and then we bought a house and it was kind of like, I was noticing I'm only getting older and I don't like (laughs) the people older than my parents making all the decisions for me and my family. I mean, I was just talking about this, uh, perhaps on the six packs on Mars podcast. I can't remember, but 
uh, this there's I don't know how old, how old are you? There's not a lot of young people looking to get into local politics. Yeah, I just turned. Uh, and that was part of it. So I wanted to I, I mean, I, like I said, it, it was an uphill battle right away. Um, but I was hoping to maybe inspire some younger people. Not that I'm the youngest anymore, but even like some 20 year old, 25, 30, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Trying to inspire and motivate people to get involved because these local races are the ones that affect our community the most, I think. You're right, 100%. I honestly didn't know, and I wish I would have talked to you before because I wasn't sure if it was like a goof, if I was, that, if I was serious. Because yeah. you just <laughs> look, honestly. Fair like, enough. I think you've taken on a new uh, note of seriousness as you get older and you got married. There's a little more seriousness in there. Like yeah. you're not little, always bullshitting. A little more gray in my beard, a little more seriousness in my uh, attitude. And yeah, I mean, I still, you know, bullshit and try to make jokes and that's kind of what the show is. And that's kind of what, like, I like to, there's a, there's a difference. There's a persona online and then there's me in real life. And I've been told, God, 10,000 times uh, when people actually meet me and they get to know me, they're like, you're completely different than how you are. <laughs> yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. be an asshole that everybody, but I don't mean any of it. It's a completely different person on there. You brought up the show, obviously, uh, uh, which is one of the reasons I wanted to get you on because it's fun. Uh, yeah. And I think it's back after a slight hiatus. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's drunk nature. Uh, that's right. Uh, yeah, let's just talk about that now. Let's okay. talk about drunk nature. Slight hiatus because quarantine happened, and I yeah. thought that was the perfect opportunity to uh, get some shows done. But then nobody wanted to travel. We didn't want to go anywhere. We didn't want to go to gas stations, and we just sat at home and drank. So I got bigger <laughs> than I've been in a very long time. Uh, and then I stopped drinking for a while and started running and lost that weight. But here we are again, uh, interested in season three. So that's going to be three. we start this week. Where are those typically on? I have no, I know they're on Instagram. Uh, Instagram, YouTube. YouTube's not as popular because I don't advertise it as much. Um, and then Facebook is where I get most of the views. Yeah. What uh, uh, Talk about Drunk Nature and what exactly uh, you're doing on those podcasts. I mean, because it's, you know, uh, it's not necessarily self-explanatory. Well, it's, oh, I didn't, I didn't know there was a, I, I thought it was. I thought it was like snakes on a plane. Um, well, I mean, it could be. You never know. They could. There could be some sort of like a double meaning there. And uh, well, I mean, I think all I did was combined everyone's two favorite things: uh, <laughs> drinking and hanging out in the woods. Uh, basically, it started from me and my brother wanted to day drink. I was visiting him downstate, and he said, "Oh, let's take out the canoe on this river." Yada yada yada. I said, "We'll bring some whiskey and we'll film it and just." tell some dumb jokes. So that's kind of where it stemmed uh, five years ago. Yeah, it's the show where I like to day drink and tell you facts about the area that we're in, um, make some jokes, get in trouble. Usually there's some misfits that we run into, uh, quote unquote experts that are dumber than me, which is surprising because I don't know anything about the outdoors. That's my favorite part is half the facts aren't even real. Oh, they're not. I just make them up, yeah. <laughs> But it's so quick that a lot of times people are like, is that real? Should I Google that? I don't want to pause it. We'll just keep going. How many fact checkers <laughs> you got like commenting? You got you got to have a few fact checkers commenting and just to make sure <laughs> everything you do is correct and everything you say. That's what the internet's for. No, nobody has a uh, surprisingly, nobody's hmm. ever actually fact checked me, but now I'm sure they will now. I, uh, I've been, I haven't been fact checked in a, uh, a really long amount of time and i don't know why because i know i say all kinds of wrong shit all the time what was the last fact that you were checked on do you remember oh no no it's been years no. <laughs> oh, it's been I know i've said a lot of wrong shit since then it's oh, yeah. got to be just like oh no that guy's clearly wrong there's no need to tell him he knows he's wrong <laughs> well oh see and i thought maybe it was the opposite because i've always been a believer that the more confident you sound the more people will trust you oh no no that you can do both but yeah, I guess you got to. If you sound really confident, you can still be trusted and be uh, completely full of shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's half the show. That's half <laughs> of my. That's now, half I've my always known you. I've always known you as like a comedian too. You did? Did you do stand up, uh, or have you done mainly internet comedy? Uh, I mean, I guess over my life, it's mostly been the internet. Yeah, I did stand up for five years, and then okay. work kind of took precedent over that. Because um, then I was. Professional crew, and then yeah, I've just been trying to make silly videos online. Doesn't 
just the ability to just ha- do any fucking thing you want on the internet is the coolest shit in the world. Oh, I had this idea. Uh, let's do that and just see how it works. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I yeah. remember I told, you know, probably a dozen friends that years ago you'd have to either move to Los Angeles or New York to try to make a career out of this, Chicago even. Yeah. Uh, but the internet, you can get noticed literally anywhere. I, uh, there's, I don't get the questions as much as I get the vibe from people. And I'm not talking about recently when I really started taking this podcast seriously, seriously, but ever since I started doing podcasts in general, there's always this sort of vibe from some people where it's just like, really like a podcast. Sure. (laughs) You know, just trying to drive it into people's heads that this is the future and this is what people are interested in in now. And it's fucking super cool. Yeah. And I mean, that's the I'm sure there was a stigma more so when it first started years ago. Um, You know, what the hell is a podcast? That's probably like what the hell is cryptocurrency? Now everyone's kicking themselves in the ass. Dude. I don't know. Have you figured that out? Because I haven't figured anything out. (laughs) I don't honestly like I've tried to have people explain it to me. I'm like, it'll never yeah, but here we are, losing money by not investing. How am I losing money if I didn't have it to begin well, with? I mean, like you're not making money. You're not making uh, extra money. You're not, I mean, I'm not losing that. money. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. No, I, I, I don't know. I did the Dogecoin. I still don't really know what the hell's going on with it. But but you did do it, though. You did yeah, invest I did. in Dogecoin. I don't know what that means, though. Have you seen, and I don't want to get into your like any finances, but have you seen any kind of return on it? Uh, yeah, I've tripled my money no since shit. then. Yeah, so I just everyone's telling me not to pull out, and as a good Catholic, I don't know any other way. Man, you know? that's good logic right there, you know. At least you own it. Yeah. <laughs> Have you? I was thinking uh, uh, the other day that you know I have no clue how many people just in this region of Northern Michigan that are trying to do the same kinds of things that you know, you and I are doing, which is just a uh, successful in- internet shows yep. trying to have successful. In- I wonder how many people in the region are trying to do podcasts right now. I really know off the top of my head, probably 10 podcasts and there's got to be way more. Probably 20 in the state. I don't know specifically how many in the area, but yeah, there's a lot. It's whether or not it takes off or not. Um, you obviously have more of a following, I would say, starting just from the radio. Yeah, but I'm watching the uh, uh, the interaction and the likes and the follows and its peaks and valleys because there's some people that are only paying attention to your shit because you're on the radio. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're like, yeah. they don't give a shit about podcasts. And there's a lot of old people that were just like, oh, Smitty, I know that guy, you know, uh, yeah. but that are like fucking podcast. You know, and they just, you can see it happening in real time almost, you know, but now yeah. it's starting to get a little bit of a following. And, uh, uh, but you're, you know, you've been going for a while now. You got to have a, decent amount of uh support i think it's a decent amount of people disgusted with what i'm doing that are just watching to see me fail which is fine it's still getting me views um well, hey. i mean it's, it it t- kind of took off after uh, i did z93's hot mom contest yeah. oh my god years. i remember that that was fucking amazing yeah so it was me trying to look you know all sexy in my photo and then there was a lot of people who were like emailing me hateful messages and <laughs> uh, like threats, but just like, how could you take it from moms? And I'm like, I'm not even a mom. Like it's a joke. And then I think I got second place in that one. And then I entered the hot dads contest and won that. And then everybody was just furious. Cause I don't have children. But like <laughs> gave all the prizes to whoever got second. I don't remember his name, but I found him and DM would him. And it was just, yep. Uh, Honestly, yeah. once you get into that, like with the, that that uh, pop, that top forty listener crowd, boy, you're talking some fucking yeah. Give serious apologies for everything you do. Yeah, <laughs> that was one thing I learned was like, no, I'm not going to because I don't care what a 13 year old girl from Mancelona thinks. No offense yeah. to 13 year old girls from Mancelona. Uh, that's okay. not who I'm appeal to. This isn't the comedy for them. I'm trying to upset them. I'm trying to troll them to make a different audience laugh. Dude, how comfortable. Honestly, I always thought you were like uh, the Northern Michigan Borat. Not like, not because you don't do 
uh, costumes and shit, you know. Yeah. But you have zero fucking problem just trolling the shit out of people. <laughs> I don't know how much level, how much of a comfort level like you have with it because I don't know. I'm just like, oh my god, I I, I cringe at the idea of me doing those things, you know. Well, um, and I mean, I've always said since high school and elementary school is I was a troll before that was actually the word for it. Uh, you know, I used to pull dumb pranks on people and the internet was just sort of becoming a thing when I was in school and we would figure out how to like prank people on chat rooms and yada, yada. Uh, yeah, no, that's a very good compliment. I'm going to start using that. I'm going to use that actually in a promo. It's oh. Smitty, the Borat of Northern Michigan. Uh, no, I mean, I don't know. I haven't been murdered yet because of it. So I think it's still going strong. Nobody's been that offended, I guess, but I do enjoy, I do enjoy doing things you're not supposed to. Yeah, there is a lot of free. There is a lot, a lot of fun to doing yeah. things and saying things that you know is gonna. G I always went with the philosophy as far as like my on-air presentation when I was doing radio, and even now on the podcast. Even though I have a lot more freedom to say what I want to say, uh, uh, I still uh, have this thing where I don't ever want to offend people, uh, yeah. but I will if that's <laughs> if yeah. it has to happen. <laughs> yeah, you know? I mean. I, I, we all know comedy is subjective and, you know, the things that I watch are probably a little darker than the average person. Um, I upset my entire family just about every day that I make a post or every time they see my ass in a video that they aren't expecting. Um, have which you, is also, have, like, have, 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 are, my grandma is uh, on Facebook. She's 92, I think, maybe 93 at this point. Uh, and I just got, honestly, I just got a message from my mom. Hey, send your grandma a Patreon link. I'm like, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> this is a good idea. It's kind well, of complicated, grandma, you know? Yeah, yeah. Grandma's not going to get it. She's going to support it, but she's not going to get it. Nope. You know, that's that's my parents. are like, how can we support drunk nature? I'm like, have you guys seen the show? Like, it's just me abusing alcohol and stumbling through the woods. Like, it doesn't get, I don't get, like, blackout drunk. But I'm just like... All the things you told me not to do as a child. Here yeah. I am doing. It. You want to I give mean, me money? Man, yeah. it's a it's a it's a fun podcast, man. Drunk nature. Oh yeah. Uh, and say uh, everywhere to find it again. Oh, this is going to be on uh, Chi TV. It's on Roku and Apple TV Plus. Okay. So it's a separate channel you have to download. I'm going to post some videos on how to do it. It's not that hard. Um, unless you're 92 like your grandma. True. I mean. <laughs> I can't do a lot of things. I don't think I'm, I think I'm a little more technologically, uh, uh, but then again, Hey, my grandma can figure Facebook out too. Who the fuck knows? So yeah. she should be able to for a channel on Roku. Yeah. Not that hard, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, you were talking, what uh, other podcasts? You got any other podcasts at all? That, you're... that I'm listening to? Yeah. Uh, I mean, nothing in Northern Michigan. There's the, uh, uh, oh God, now I'm going to blank. What's the name of the one down state? Well, there's like story of the year page Avenue crew that I listen to. That's a, based on a band in St. Louis that I listened to. Those guys, I just feel like I grew up with them because they started, I started listening to them when I was 14. Yeah. I feel like I kind of relate to them because they're big, dumb idiots like me. But now they're like 42 and still acting the same way. So it's kind of, you know, well, you were saying like, it's hard to grow up and it's hard to, you've been doing it for so long. Um, yeah. And then my wife likes listening to every sort of uh, crime podcast. So we listen to a lot of those too. Oh, nice. I was actually yeah. talking, are you doing any other, uh, uh, any oh. podcast projects or anything? But no, no, no. I mean, that's I'm, always, I always like finding out new fun podcasts to, to check out too. No, I, but that would be, uh, I'm not, I don't know how to set one up. So that would be a Dewan thing if he wanted to set one up. No, oh, yeah, no, I just, Dewan knows that. that was curious. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'd love to. I, he, does he, he does all your videos. Dewan had him on the podcast a minute ago. Yeah. I watched that. Yeah. That was fun to watch. Um, yeah, he does. Uh, he's the camera guy for drunk nature. Uh, he's the one, he gets upset a lot at the things that I say. So he's like the first person that I have to like push over the, the ledge to like, this is socially acceptable. Dewan, just get over it. You know? Uh, and a lot of times he'll, he'll, he will definitely reel me back in, um, at some of them. And, uh, but yeah, he does all the he does all the videos. Him and I will edit the whole season. Um, he does a lot more of the effects and stuff, and I'm going to do just the basic yeah. storyline, visual effects for it. So you got to have those moral you got to have those moral compasses, man. I know, but do you though? Do you really want one? I mean, I struggle. I go back and forth. 
because exactly. I, it's probably a good idea. But then if there's nobody to put the fucking brakes on, I'm like, fuck. Yeah. You know. Well, that's also what I think. You know, my wife Samantha's for. She yells at me a lot too. <laughs> like all I got is Levi. He doesn't give a fuck what I do. I gotta have you know. I, I, I know. And then the dogs just look at me like they like they know I did something wrong. I'm like, really. <laughs> Uh, dude, anytime you're in Travers, uh, I would love to have you on the podcast. You want to come in the Smith hole studio? I got, uh, uh, anytime, anytime you're welcome. You get a vaccine. I'm in. I did. I got uh, shot number two in a couple weeks. Nice. Oh yeah. Good for you. I know we're still, we're still struggling getting half the people over here vaccinated. So we'll see. I don't, I, I don't look at any of the statistics anymore i just can't take it i'm like do i need one sure where do i go okay <laughs> i can't take it anymore yeah i figure we're all gonna die so if it happens sooner or whatever god can't can't i'm not that lucky <laughs> <laughs> not that easy <laughs> uh brad hall drunk nature uh dude uh uh you're super fun to chat with man I'm glad you came Thank on the you. podcast appreciate okay. it i'll see you soon we'll be there soon all right man thanks Later, take it easy brad Thanks, Brad. Appreciate it. And let's get into the meat of the podcast, which is UFOs today. Not this is not. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff on the podcast still to come, but uh, uh, now the actual headline on the story from Esquire is: I feel like this UFO news should get more attention. And it's talking specifically about this news uh, uh, dated April seventeenth uh, of. The Pentagon basically admitting that there was this uh, new task force to basically find out what the UFOs are that have been increasingly proven to be a real thing. Uh, The Department of Defense established the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force to study videos like these and other unexplained sightings. Uh, Now, there was an article posted on the what sounds like a conspiracy theory blog site, potentially. I have not visited this website. I don't know. I can't really uh, say that. Uh, but it's called Mystery Wire. And they reported that uh, the task force reports noted that the objects were able to remain stationary in high winds with no movement beyond the capability of known balloons or drones. Uh, those were briefings prepared by the task force. So uh, you're like, well, Mystery Wire, it's for any UFO. But... It was reported by CBS News. It was verified by CBS News. The Pentagon admitted that these photos uh, and videos that they have of UFOs are, were obtained by the Navy and such. Uh, different ones that were released. I think uh, I wish I could remember the, the the cylindrical one over the ocean, which was uh, taken by credible Navy pilots. Uh, but the gist of the article is that oh, this is starting to hit a tipping point where (laughs) more and more things are proven. Uh, They actually call it the ice is starting to crack down the subject of strange lights in the sky. And more and more, it's getting proven that there's fucking aliens. (laughs) Like, I'm so convinced now that there's aliens. It is crazy. I'd always hoped and wanted there to be a thing. Uh, You know, this is science fiction to a point. But, uh, like, where was it? Uh, this story here. I had it ready to go. Uh, these are things that nobody's talking about. Like, this is an NBC News story about a former Israeli space security chief by the name of Haim Eshed. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> it, like, it sounds fucking crazy. Yeah. But it's supposed to be, like, a respected... Uh, uh, person in this position in the Israeli government. He was the former head of Israel's Defense Ministry Space Directorate. They're supposed to know what the fuck they're talking about, right? And it's essentially about, and this is back in December, uh, uh, essentially about their uh, earthlings have been in contact with extraterrestrials from a galactic federation. A respected professor, skip down, uh, said that cooperations, 
co- excuse me, cooperation agreements had been signed between species, including an underground base in the depths of Mars, where there are American astronauts and alien representatives. And it goes on to say that President Trump, former President Trump, was aware of their existence, the extraterrestrials, and had been on the verge of revealing information, but he was not to in order to prevent mass hysteria, but essentially was the reason for the Space Force being created. Man, say what you want. Yeah, it sounds fucking crazy, but what it's like the Bill Cosby thing, and I know it's completely different. Please don't blow me up. Uh, but it is. It's like when there's one incident, incident, uh, you have the maybe have the benefit of the doubt, the benefit of the, you know what I'm talking about. But the more incidents and the more it's just like the more smoke, the more fire. So uh, at some point, we're going to get some real proof that nobody's going to be able to just shuffle under the rug. <laughs> Man, so much evidence. And then the fucking. uh <clears throat> Yeah, we're doing great, collecting all this great uh, evidence. The Pentagon ex- admits that it's a real thing. Then the fucking monoliths happen and ruin everything. All right, I got the link for this uh, from uh, CTV. It's Canadian News, so similar to BBC or something. And uh, <laughs> uh, I forgot what I was talking about already. Okay, uh, about this massive cheating scandal in professional bridge. Now, again, I uh, saw this story and it said about a cheating scandal in bridge. And I was just like, huh, well, how, uh, how serious could this cheating scandal in <laughs> professional bridge be? A new Israeli you want to talk about serious shit, man. Competitive bridge and dirty tricks. A massive cheating scandal along the way. Dirty Tricks, New documentary. Lotan Fisher, widely considered to be the world's best bridge player as he becomes engulfed in controversy that threatens <sighs> to bring down the sport's billion-dollar industry. The film is going to premiere at Hot Docs later this week. And for more, I'm joined by Daniel Sivan. I hope I'm saying your last name right, Daniel. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, you're the film's director. He joins me all the way from Tel Aviv. Great to see you tonight. I am fascinated by this film. Me you made too. Bridge look sexy. How did how did that happen? Yeah, I mean, when I when I was approached with with doing this film, I was like, oh my god. I mean, bridge. Honestly, bridge. I always thought love bridge is like all these fucking old people just playing bridge. Very uh, popular amongst the. Of course, old people can cheat. Hello, I look at the fucking world we live in, but very sexy sport. And once I started diving into it, I discovered this. Just this cutthroat um, environment in which you know oh people God. are sponsored by billionaires. It's the best players in the world, and they are really fighting to the death. And when you have great competition, you have great scandal. Anyway, and then, then, that's a thing, and that's really all the time I really wanted to uh, dedicate to that. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> Real eye-opening about the bridge cheating scandal. I was not interested in that in the slightest. Uh, uh, just shocked to find out that it was super fucking serious, though. Uh, uh, now it's time to move on with your day. Don't turn off the podcast yet, though. Got a 420 break coming up. Uh, I Look, I, this is a rhetorical question, but can somebody tell me why Domino's decided to bring the Noid back? I don't know if you remember the Noid uh is the worst it is the worst like commercial company mascot or anything ever this is the most annoying like i don't know annoyed <laughs> bow 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 uh i saw this shit watching the draft with brother levi and let's just take a look at the new noid i don't know if you remember but when i tell you it's the worst thing of all time Tis the worst thing of all time. We're constantly innovating to find better ways to deliver you pizza, which is why we're testing driverless. I bet it's been, I don't and it's got even remember the last time I had Domino's. Ew. Oh, man, every time I hope he gets electrocuted and dies. He always does. He always come back. Fucking annoyed. I'm a fucking annoyed at the annoyed. Avoid the fucking annoyed. For just $5.99 each. 
Ew, that's man. I hate how catchy it is too. I hate the noid. I don't. Uh, I don't want it to be a thing anymore. I don't like that. Uh, I have to be subjected to see it. Uh, and I was reading the story, and they're like, "Oh yeah, now you get uh, to get uh, viral videos uh, now because thanks to the fucking internet and uh, gifts, oh noid gifts. Of course, that's a fucking thing. Oh god, get me out of here." Get me out of here. Honestly, I love this fucking story out of Ireland. Uh, you, I don't know if you're aware of the five-year plan, if you have not heard the five-year plan yet, but my goal is after five years of trying to build this podcast and uh, raise enough money with the Patreon page to go to Ireland for a year-long hike where I'm doing a pub podcast tour, old-school pub podcast tour, going to all the pubs, talking to all the Irish old boys, and just checking Ireland out for a year, walking around the fucking country. And I saw, I'm not exactly sure where this is. It is the uh, the River Boyne in Ireland. There's a map. <laughs> you can see it. And there was this guy who was talking about Anthony Murphy. And he says he was, he found this centuries-old log boat in this river, River Boyne. And it, that's not neither here nor there because it's kind of cool, but it's not my thing necessarily. Uh, just the fact that this guy was looking for somebody else, for something else, somebody, something. He was looking for Kevin the Dolphin that's been in the river the last couple of weeks. Apparently, according to scientists and researchers, every once in a while, Kevin the Dolphin uh, likes to go up and down this river Boyne. It's named for, actually, uh, Kevin Costner for some reason. I don't know. But now... All I want to do, this is like I have to check off this list, uh, the five-year plan uh, with Smitty, all the shit that I'm going <laughs> to have to go and check out and see while I'm walking around that island. And, uh, man, there you go. Five-year plan, Kevin the Dolphin, let's make it happen. And in a, a story related, at least, to the five-year plan, uh, shout out to Max Snyder, actually, podcast listener and listened on the radio as well. Uh, Max Snyder sent me this story uh, out of the UK, and it's uh, the Lincolnshire County Council recently posted a job listing for a heritage project officer. And what they're looking for is somebody to uh, document the history of its of its pubs around, I, I think, all of Britain. Uh, there are entire groups dedicated to documenting, call them history nerds like to run local museums which is awesome we need to have those people but they're fucking nerds man come on uh that being said maintaining the history of british pubs forty thousand dollars a year they're hiring people to do this thing oh man that sounds like right up my fucking alley i'm already gonna be there but i'm gonna be in ireland although i will say i am giving myself enough spontaneity in my trip where i'm gonna plan it out to an extent it's like once i get there I'd spend a day or three in different towns checking it out, and then now oh, where am I going to go now? That being said, I might go to Great. I might go to uh, uh, the UK. I might go to uh, Scotland. I might go to uh, other parts of Europe, like Germany or something, for Oktoberfest. Depending on how it's going and what the money situation. Patreon, hook it up. Uh, <laughs> that being said, uh, researching and recording the architectural and social history of public houses along a 50-mile stretch. That's kind of rad, man. Uh, except it sounds like too much paperwork. It's, some things get me. Some things don't. Too much paperwork. You just lose me at reading. Fuck. It's one of those things. I don't want to talk about this, but I have to talk about this, you know. I don't. Especially now that I've been not in fucking radio anymore, uh, I'd never have to ever listen to a Kid Rock song uh, ever again. Really, if I don't want to, if it's on his background, I'll do my best to get out of that situation. But you know what I'm talking about. But I have to talk about this at Kid Rock's bar in Nashville. Uh, it's really just fucking perfect. There was somebody. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of poop and shit references and uh, double entendres in this fucking story where a guy removed his colostomy bag <laughs> and flung shit all over the place. Uh, according to the Nashville Scanner, and side note, I fucking love the uh, the Facebook pages and Twitter pages that simply repost 
uh, scanner stuff that's coming in, like in that community, I think that's either A, awesome, it works really well uh, in keeping citizens informed, or B, a lot of times it's fucking hilarious, like in this case, the Nashville scanner. Mail took off his colostomy bag. I don't know why it's a fucking old-timey voice. Mail took off his colostomy bag and started swinging it at others. Some units have feces on them. This is this is the third time I've heard this colostomy bag guy pass two nights. Ew. Uh, first of all, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it was inside or outside uh, at the bar. I have no clue. All I just know is anytime you can make shit jokes about uh, anything related to Kid Rock... A, it works, and B, uh, duh, uh, from one shitty story to another, story out of Wisconsin. <laughs> now, I've avoided any, avoided any Wisconsin stories, and there hasn't been any uh, worth a fuck because I've just been holding out for the hope that Aaron Rodgers leaves Green Bay. And, oh, my God, I'm trying not to, like, talk about it too much and fucking jinx it, though. Ooh. Anyway, uh, this particular story out of Wisconsin uh, is... Uh, out of Madison, Wisconsin, and it's a 30-year-old story out of Madison, Wisconsin. It's the 30th anniversary. Now, I, I just saw this posted. It was the 30th anniversary, and uh, I read it and said, oh, my God, this is the most Wisconsin story of all time. <sighs> a massive fire of butter is essentially mostly butter. A burning river of melted butter was sent into the streets uh, let's see. The four alarm blaze that broke out at three thirty lasted like a full day of burning. Uh, Friday, blah blah blah. Uh, lunch meat cheese. There was an, uh, a fuck ton of ch Oscar Mayer cheese. Nearly uh, how many? Ten to twenty million. Six stories of butter melted and started flowing into the streets and sewers. They had to take an end loader put sand on it and they basically had to make dams to stop it from flowing into the waterways and they couldn't uh, it, they had to make sure it didn't go in the sewers as well because it would harden up uh, it was central storage warehouse made up of five buildings storing more than 50 million pounds of food items including cheese oscar meyer meats <laughs> swiss colony products just fucking butter and wisconsin cheese and everything uh now, look, I love all of those things, but I love making fun of Wisconsin. And I know you're asking, how could I turn this 30-year-old tragedy uh, into a joke about people from Wisconsin? Uh, I will fucking think of something because fuck Aaron Rodgers. That's why. You know who my new favorite actor is? And I'm not even fucking kidding. Gene Smart. And I'm not sure how many people know who Gene Smart is. I only knew of Gene Smart from uh, Designing Women from the 80s with... Uh, uh, Annie Potts and Dixie Carter. Was that it? Uh, I can't remember who else was in that show. Anyway, uh, Jean Smart. And I hadn't seen anything of her in years, and for all I knew, she wasn't fucking doing anything. And then, oh, uh, man, what the hell was it that uh, uh, I got her IMDB page up, actually? Uh, she was in... Oh, man, she was in, uh, there it is, there it is, there it is, The Accountant with Ben Affleck. And I remember thinking when I watched it, which was a really good movie, The Accountant, I remember thinking, God, she, that's Gene Smart. She's fucking awesome in this movie. And then, uh, it, I don't know, a couple years since I've watched The Accountant, and then I'm watching uh, The Watchmen on HBO. And she was a huge main driving force character in that show, too, and fucking great and actually, I'm just going to play this. Uh, let's play this clip of this trailer of the new HBO. I think it's a series uh, on HBO Max. Uh, it's called Hacks, right? She's like an aging comedian. Uh, so she was on Watchmen and Awesome. And she's on the new Mayors of Easttown with uh, Kate Winslet, which looks really good, too. And I'm watching this trailer, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is a total chick flick, and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> what is that? What does that matter if I like to watch fucking chick flicks anyway? Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, I want to kill this before, like, uh... 
uh, music, copyrights, shit. But you get the idea, uh, I think, that I really like uh, Gene Smart. Surprise! I don't know why I'm surprised. Uh, just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, Gene Smart goes from designing women to some of the best fucking TVs and movies I've seen in a long time. <sighs> I can't believe I had to be convinced that momfluencer was a real term. <laughs> and I was still just didn't really understand. I didn't really get it until I saw this story. A uh, chick by the name of Katie Sorensen, she's facing all kinds of charges. Uh, six months in jail. Uh Faces two, well, when I say all kinds of charges, I could have read the story. Two misdemeanor counts said that uh, a Latino couple had tried to steal her kids, so she's racist on top of uh, stupid. Like I said, uh, each charge carries a maximum penalty of six months in jail, but uh, the momfluencer, they call her a wannabe momfluencer in California, like an influencer, like you see on Instagram or whatever. But, like, the mom version. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, I had to look, and I saw a picture of her with her kid, and it was just they're making their kid fashionable and making them like a doll. It just the, the influencer part is just... Uh, uh, please don't tell me I'm like that. <laughs> I just want to make people fucking laugh. <laughs> I don't want to be an influencer if it's like that. <laughs> Then, uh, another reason we're all fucking doomed is because shows like this are popular. Shows like this are even on TV. The Smothered, I haven't, I'm not even going to watch the trailer. I'm just telling you about it. Uh, we could watch it on the podcast, but uh, I don't really, it's just going to irritate me. But I'm going to tell you about it because it's terrible. The TLC reality series, uh, I do believe it is brand new, uh, where... I don't know. It's just it's these. It's called smothered, and it's about these moms who are smothering their daughters with all kinds of inappropriate shit. Like this one mother daughter who give each other Brazilian waxes, and that might be okay for some people. And whatever, I'm not saying what is right or wrong. And there's another uh, another mom that artificially inseminates her daughter. Uh, with a don donor's sperm because she's got to be there for that. She's got to do that, man. <sighs> really feeling like I need a four twenty break. Should I be getting made for this, boys? Water bomb so smooth you don't realize how high you're getting. Till it's too late. I am fucked up out here. <laughs> I just saw that whatever Duger fuckface got arrested for what I assumed was for something self-righteous and horrible, and yep, called it. Remember when George Carlin talked about child worship? And I'm not talking about loving your kids or the natural inclination to have children, but take a look around. And what's the right amount of kids? I don't know. I come from a family of four, and I can tell you that no matter how much I love my family, it was probably too fucking many. Our obsession with kids is just gross. And have you ever thought about how fucking absurd the idea of a family legacy is? I'm not talking about not being proud of something your dad or your grandfather accomplished or did, but the very idea that you have to live up to something an ancestor did or even a father. A family legacy is only awesome if your family did awesome things. If your family's all methed out in the generationally owned trailer park, lots of times that's a legacy you'd like to leave behind. Or maybe your ancestors were taken from and or had their legacy wiped out over the course of thousands of years. Then what's a legacy? Like all the Dugers kids are probably going to be like, my dad's famous for having a reality show because he had a bunch of fucking kids. That's it. That's all he did. I guess I too will have a bunch of fucking kids and further push our civilization to the brink via mass consumption too. I mean, I know Idiocracy isn't technically a documentary, but just take a look. They called it. It's not necessarily the religious aspect, trust me. That's for another rant and another podcast. But come on, stop being fruitful and multiplying. You're watering down the market. What the fuck do you mean watering down the market? Like, I'm sorry, I've never cared about the name. 
or legacy of the family. Maybe it's just because there's just so many fucking Smith, it just feels pointless and watered down. I say it all the time, mediocre Smiths. I almost named the podcast that, but I'm trying to get away from the whole too much self-deprecating thing. Because I'm good enough, smart enough, and god damn it, people like me. Anyway, stop fucking! That's your 420 break, and now you feel normal. All right, again, thanks to Brad Hall from Drunk Nature. And remember, hit up the Patreon page. Take a look at the five-year plan. Got the uh, uh, crowdfunding, the GoFundMe page. Uh, if you don't want to take part in the Patreon, uh, I would say even a like, just a, a comment every once in a while, give it a view. Uh, even if you don't want to be a part of the Patreon team, uh, I would uh, uh, appreciate any sort of help you can give me along the way. And just I just want you to like the podcast. So uh, thank you very much. Until next time, what the hell, everything? What the hell, everything?